Here's what's acceptable to everybody, being on time, right? Not being on time is acceptable probably, you know, to a lot of people, but some, it's going to cost you. Now, the mind must be nourished. It's got to have good food. Food for thought. Bread for the head, we call it. Yes, you need a slice of toast in the morning, right, for your body, but you need a slice of cassette. A slice of cassette you put in the car system and listen and listen. Let something feed your mind. Stand guard at the door of your mind. Don't just listen to anything and everything. Make sure that you're, you're your own best filter of what goes into your mental factory and spins out the fabric of your life and future. Stand guard at the door of your mind. What is it that that might be the key that you learn to let go of something? And this letting go is of course going to be uncomfortable. Why? Because it is something that no one, normally in our school systems you don't, find the subject how to let go you find the subject how to get more. And so that means in that moment when people are getting confronted the first time with this type of teachings you it's uncomfortable. And so someone is always confronted. Here then he's brought down. Then he gets message how he will build himself up again. Then he gets smashed down again and so it continues when we as humans feel something is lacking. The answer is just consume more, which means just go out and look where are you going to find Something that is going to fill up that gap, to fill up that hole that you are feeling. That is the approach that we have outside. You need a good library. And in this library, you need all kinds of diversity. You need a book on Gandhi and you need a book on Hitler. Gandhi to show you how high and lofty someone's ambitions that are noble can go. And the other one to show you how despicable and low someone can sink. In terms of pure evil embodied in human. Don't be afraid of the debate. Don't be afraid of the health debate. Don't be afraid of the religious debate, the spiritual debate. Don't be afraid of something you believe in to be challenged. Because that's where the vigor and the, and the flourishing of something is. It, it is, survives the debate. If it survives the debate, it's a pretty good idea. A senator in Washington, D.C. says, I got a great idea. Somebody says, oh, let's grab it and run with it. Say, no, we don't just grab it and run with it. What's the Senate for? To debate. And the rest of the sentence says, put your idea on the table and let's debate. Let me point out another important distinction between character and charisma. You may have noticed it already. In both its definition and its derivation, character doesn't refer to other people. It doesn't refer to having power over other people or getting other people to follow you or gaining favor with other people. Character is something that you have and that you are. You could be marooned on a desert island and your character would still be important. In fact, it would likely be very important in that situation. But charisma wouldn't do you any good at all. Charisma requires the presence of others while character is all about you. Character is the person you are after you've chiseled and chiseled and have gotten past all the unnecessary material to what's underneath. I teach my staff around the world, put your goals in your journal. Because one of the major people you want to study is yourself. Say, so here's the list of goals I put together three weeks ago. Here's the list of goals I put together two years ago. Here's some of the changes I made, rearrangement of my priorities. I scratched these off, I put these on, I've gotten these. Study your accomplishments, study what your desires are. Put them on paper, write them down. Here's another reason for writing your goals down. It shows you're serious about doing better. And to do better, you gotta get serious. You don't have to be grim, but you must be serious. Everybody hopes things will get better. Everybody hopes. Poor people hope. That ought to tell you something. It means the future does not get better by hope. It gets better by plan. Your personal behavior in the marketplace. Not just what you know and what you've learned, ready now to serve in product or service, but a big share of your future success, both economically and every other way, is gonna lie in your own behavior. This is part of personal development. 
How do you affect other people? Is that going to play a role in the kind of income you have and the kind of future you have? And the answer is yes, of course, yes. Here's one of the most important things to think of in the marketplace, your language. Now, some people who are inclined to use bad language, I'm telling you, in the marketplace is not the place. To use bad language in the marketplace, here's, it's too costly. If you were to add up what it really cost, I'm telling you, you'd be a lot more careful. You've got to shift gears from the bar language to the marketplace language. Some things you can get by with telling a dirty story and, you know, using a little profanity in the bar, but now when it comes to the marketplace, you've got to be careful. Everything will change for you if you will change. You don't have to change what's outside. All you've got to change is what's inside to have more. You simply have to become more. And then he said, don't wish it was easier. Wish you were better. Start working on yourself, making these personal changes. And he said it of all change for you don't wish for less problems wish for more skills life is going to happen and you're going to set a plan and you're going to have a vision and you're going to hope that it's going to turn out perfect but what so often happens in life is that things get burned and things go the wrong way and it's in that moment that you're gonna have to choose your reaction do you have a choice to make you have the right reaction or do you have the wrong reaction some of us were tempted I'll just lay here and it will pass over me, I'm telling you. You will be in a vicious cycle forever. You have to get up. Some of you have been knocked out by light, and you got up and saw the blood. He hit me sometimes in life. You have to hit back, recycle your pain, get something from it. You're already in pain. Use it, do something with it. Allow it to take you to the next level. Allow your pain to push you to greatness. Here's a key phrase. Beware of using inside lingo on the outside world. You know, all the computer guys had to learn that, right? They got off in this spacey kind of language stuff and they found out people that bought their computers didn't know how to run them simply because they couldn't understand the language. Now they had to say, well, we can use this language among ourselves, the computer lingo among ourselves, but we got to shift gears now in the marketplace and make this user friendly in terms of language that people can understand. So strange language in the inside circle of business and so on is okay. But you have to sort of shift gears now when you get out into the marketplace. Get up, your mama needs you, your daddy needs you, your children need you. Get up, your why is going to push you when you can't push yourself. When you want to quit and give up, your why is going to give you that edge you need, that advantage you need, that lift that you need to get to the next level of your why you better go inside. You're still looking outside for the stuff that's already. Inside, you're still looking for someone to save you when you're already your superhero. You're looking for some information from somebody when you already got what you need in your head. It's just time for you to get up and be the best version of you.